Have you ever wanted amazing tools to add to your arsenal of weapons and items to make your Minecraft world that much more exciting? But don't feel like adding any mods to your world? Well, simple enough. Today, in only one command, I showcase to you Tinker's Construct. What's going on guys? Log.zip here. Welcome back to Only One Command of Minecraft Redstone Series where I showcase the amazing command block creations that only take one command to add to your Minecraft world to add amazing things to it. Although today's takes three command blocks. Don't hate me, man. It's it's the name of the series. It doesn't necessarily mean we can't do stuff that's only one command only. You know what I mean? So this one only takes three, so I figured it'd count. This one is Tinker's Construct in Vanilla Minecraft, created by the RSDG Productions. The command, as well as a link to RSDG channel, is going to be found in the description of this video. And the one that does not know what Tinker's Construct is, it's basically a mod that you can add to Minecraft that allows you to heavily customize your weapons and tools, as well as maximize the output of the ores you get. So, using this little command block creation, you're going to be able to add a construct to your world that you can not only use to double the output of your ores. As you saw here, we placed in one iron ore, and as you'll see in just a second here, we got two out of it, but you can also use it to cast some amazing tools and weapons that you'll be able to use to create awesome creations. We just made ourselves a nice rideable iron lumber axe. Rideable meaning you can add enchantments to it. Let's throw some gold up in here. Make a nice pickaxe. Let's make a nice, we'll make a nice gold sword as well. You're seeing this all live as it's happening. You'll be able to add this to your world with three command blocks. So I do hope you enjoy what you see in this episode of Only One Command. If you do and you want to see more on the channel, then do make sure you drop a like on the video. It means so much to have your support for the series. If we can break 1,500 likes for this awesome video, then uh, I don't know, I'd feel pretty good. But we're, all, we're not even done, that's not even the half of it. So you see, we're making all these great things. Now we get to start having some serious fun with how it all works. So check it out. We just made all these great tools, and when you pick them up, you're about to see what you can make using this one command creation. You ready for this? Boom, 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 boom. Any guesses? Let me show you. Fire Aspect 3 Lumber Axe, Silk Touch 1 Spade, Sharpness 4, Golden Pick, Unbreaking 3, Golden Longsword, Looting 1, Fortune 1 Diamond Pick, Efficiency. You'll be able to add a bunch of different modifiers to your Minecraft tools that go way beyond what you see here. And I'm going to show you how to do it all right now. Ah, so the fact that there's two additional command blocks required didn't scare you off, huh? You must really want Tinker's Construct for your vanilla world, don't you? Well, I'm here to show you how to do it. First thing you're going to need is a command block, of course, which is the following command. Slash give at p space minecraft colon command underscore block. You can just type in this and then press tab and it'll get you a command block. And then press enter on your keyboard. You're also going to need a way to power said command block. Either a block of redstone or some way to power in general. Finally, you're going to need not one, not two, but as we saw, three different commands. Go ahead and paste in the first one. And once you've done that, you press done. Power the sucker. Starts to get powered. You're going to notice something right off the bat. So... This baby's all nice and built. Whoa, lots of stuff going on. You'll get yourself two different books. Now this is kind of, oh boy, oh boy. First thing you're gonna wanna do is type in this game rule. Game rule, command block output false. Not false, false. All that stuff will stop happening. You don't gotta worry about that. You'll be given two different books. Tinker's Guide, command block contraption created by RSDG. Click his link to get this channel right there and a remove smelter option, which we'll get into just a little bit. And then you've got Tinker's Tools Guide. And this will kind of tell you what you can do to customize your weapons. We got modifiers, luck, efficiency. Oh my gosh, it is crazy. But you're not done yet. You're gonna need to do two more command blocks. Of course, you've got created by RSDG, Tinker's Construct, Spell 3. Now, RSDG has recommended you go 19 blocks to the left of your initial command block uh, to prevent Lag, it's gonna be less laggy, I guess, if you do that. So we're gonna give it a shot. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, blah, 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 blah. Okay, 19. That should sure. Why not? Okay. Paste in the second command, which we've already have right there, and then you go and press that down once again. It's gonna start loading up. And also just one, two, three, approximately that looks good. And then you're gonna need the final command. 
So you'll grab said final command, you'll paste it right in here, and you'll power up your very last dear command block friend. Wherever you decide to add this mod to world, make sure you type right at the center of it, slash set world spawn. That way, not sets world spawn, that way this is taking place in your spawn chunks and the mod works properly. So, with only three commands, see it's just, this is not as catchy, okay? What do you want from me? You have Tinker's Construct added to your vanilla world. Now we can show you a little bit about it. All right, now that you've installed the command, it's time to show you how to use it. I'm just kidding. Uh, anyway, well, I'm not kidding. We're not gonna show you how to use it. I'm just not sure I was talking like that. Anyway, this is the smeltery that you're going to need to build. I have already pre-built it, don't worry. I'm gonna show you how to build it. I just want you to know, this is what this baby is gonna look like. Since it's already been assembled, you jump in here, turns into this great machine that's gonna start smelting your ores, doubling them, or creating amazing modified tools for your vanilla world. So now that you know what it looks like, I'm gonna break down how you build it. Just kidding. Before I show you how to build it, I'm gonna show you how to dismantle it because that just makes the most sense. Once you build it, you're not gonna be, you jump in the middle to activate it like I did. You know, see, I, you jump on in and then all these babies appear. If you want to get rid of it, find a smelter that has currently been assembled in your world. Stand right on top of it and then go remove step one. Stand on top right in the center. See, we're right in the center. Remove step one. Did it. And then you go you remove step two. And all of a sudden, you're back to your lonesome. You don't get that dropper back. That's that's what you get. That's that's your punishment. So that is how you dismantle it. But now I'm gonna show you how to build it. Right, right, right. So here we go. We got the smell tree. It's about to pop off, friends. We'll grab these for the time being. And we got some add-ons I'm gonna show you in just a second. But you're gonna need 52 stone bricks, three glass, two droppers, one furnace, one bucket of lava, and one item that you're willing to just do away with. You know, it could be a raw piece of food, a cobblestone, basically anything that you can cook in a furnace that you don't care about. So basically you start with a nice three by three area, you lay down your nine bricks, and then all around the perimeter, except in certain spots, you're going to place down stone bricks. Now you'll see here, we're doing this real, real delicate, you see. Now let me, I, I'll tell you what, I wish I had a, uh, Wish I had a pickaxe. How about this? We're just gonna, I'm gonna give myself a pickaxe. I'm just saying, this would be a lot easier for you to follow if I can break blocks. <laughs> so basically just, just do this, build all the way around it. You're gonna notice in a second here that you actually are just a schmidgen short of bricks, assuming you had 52. You'll notice, you see, do you notice? You gotta build this sucker four blocks in height, just like this. Now, wherever the front of your construct is going to be, break, these blocks like this you see now I got three extra to work with we're just gonna stack them right there for the time being and you're gonna place down one two and three glass right at the front there you're also gonna break this sucker down place oh please let me grab it <laughs> place a dropper facing up to do that kind of position your mouse so that you place it when you're going upwards dropper is now placed you want to double check that it is placed properly this little slot should be facing upwards. Remember, this is a dropper, not a dispenser. You got it? So place that block back. Break this block down as well. Place a furnace facing towards you. This direction. Don't face it over here. Gotta be coming in this direction. Now finally, if I wasn't such the worst guy, you're gonna wanna cut out a little hole right there. Place your second dropper facing east. So this is the front side. Go over to the right side. You place that sucker down. Now I gotta figure out how to get back up there. The power of game mode. Turns out I actually grabbed one extra stone brick. But now, your baby is compatible and set. And once again, to activate it, you'll just, boop, just like that. Now ready for smelting. This block is gonna disappear. That comes in the next part. So you got all these great ores. You feel like smelting down. You want to get that double ore goodness. You're even crazy. You picked up a silk touch pickaxe, but you don't have your fortune pickaxe yet. Well, you can use the construct to smelt down even diamond and emerald ores as well to double your output. But before you do any of that, you're going to have to set the baby to cook. To cook. I almost said light. To cook. It's technically, well, I mean, it's not even going to cook. It's going to smelt it. So you're going to need to grab that disposable, furnaceable item we discussed earlier, just a cobblestone, place it in your bucket of lava. Bucket of lava and the cobblestone is going to be eaten. You can technically place a hopper right underneath 
right down here and it will collect the bucket but I figure hey you're building the construct you're more than likely rich man swag we ain't gonna worry too much about the bucket but now this thing's gonna be cooking for a good solid amount of time and like I said you notice the dropper's gone here that's because that's where you place in the fuel so we'll place in one gold block and look at it it fills it's filled the construct is ready for you to reap its benefits are you checking this out so it's gonna cook slowly it's gonna cook over there and when it is done cooking check it out double ingots have been doubled you put in one ore you get out two gold ingots now what I recommend because you can do multiples of this is do it a little bit slowly do it just a little bit slowly. you see what I mean we're going slow in here give the machine time to register because sometimes it'll poop out Sometimes some ores will appear back here or on top of the construct. You don't want that to happen. But if you take it nice and easy, you'll see it'll slowly start cooking up properly. We got four in there now. One more should be cooking in half a second. Unless, see, look, it appeared on top there. Not sure why it did that. It didn't do that in my trial runs, but, you know, I figured, oops, I figured full disclosure. Gotta let you know what's going on. Of course, this is gonna be solved with things like hoppers and such, but the beauty of it is you've got doubled ore. So even if you lose a couple here and there, you more than certainly are making up for it. You can also go crazy. Let's say you want to put in an iron ore, and then you want to put in a, let's put a diamond ore, and then you put in the emerald ore next. Maybe you want to throw in a coal ore. So we, we got we got emerald, and then iron, and then diamond, and then coal, I think? Either way, it's going to start collecting. I like it. Look at that. Filling up. Ugh. So good. Let's put two diamonds and then we'll put in two coals and then one iron and then two golds and then an emerald I cannot wait for the machine to break when I've done this but if it doesn't break nope it broke which is why like I said make sure you put your ores in slowly otherwise there is a chance a lot of them won't end up in the dropper but you'll notice they all cooked fairly instantly so wherever you put your contract down just make sure the back area is accessible make sure the area on top is accessible Alternatively, you consider these smeltery add-ons yes. that you can add to your construct to make it even more accessible and great to use. So there's two different add-ons. One is actually kind of necessary if you want to get the tools and the modifiers going, but this one is just one that actually RSDG, uh, you know, I don't want to say invented because it's fairly simple redstone, but I got the idea from it from him. So you want to set an area for that the dropper automatically collects, like while you're out exploring, maybe you want to set a couple of these to cook away while you're exploring. Well, it's very simple. All you got to do is place down a collection chest right here, place down a hopper right on top of it, and then you're going to make a little bit of a clock using a comparator. Put the comparator right on top there, then you get a nice hopper. Boom. Not facing that way, but you gotta place that down temporarily so that you can break this guy. Then I need to get another pickaxe, dang it. So then, now that this guy's placed properly, break this one again, place him facing into this one. Now you've made a hopper clock. You probably wonder, well, how do I do the, the hopper clock bad? Well, I'll show you. All I gotta do is put in a single item. Let me just put in this cobblestone. And you'll see, start sending out a pulse. Now what this is gonna do is every time this pulses, it's gonna cause this dispenser to pop the items into this hopper which will be collected in the chest for ample look we are cooking up the diamond let's how long is it gonna take to cook see you see so now it's been placed in there now okay you get a diamond then you throw in an emerald you throw in a diamond and you throw in an emerald just like that you're gonna see every time it goes silent listen that's right you can't listen because it's silent but now it is you see slowly fills up also seems like it's a little more reliable if you put on the filter. Let's try and drive it crazy. Right? One, two, one, one, two, three, one, one, two, and then one more of these, just for good measure. I'm curious to see what happens. I almost certainly just broke this device, but I don't know for sure. You know what I mean? <laughs> we'll check in just a second here. So, oh, yeah, broke it. Again, go slow, folks. Otherwise, I cannot guarantee the safety or the, yeah, yeah, go slow. Maybe you just hate how this sounds, constantly going off, but you don't feel like dismantling it every time. That's not a problem. Place a block here, place a lever here. Suddenly, if you switch the lever, this will stay on, will no longer make the noise. So if you're ever bulk producing, place a couple blocks there. Again, if you do it slowly, this shouldn't happen. But you do it slowly, you put in like 10 or 15 at a time. You flip this on when it's ready to collect, good. When it's done, flip that switch, not a big deal anymore. Simple. So now that the smeltery itself is out of the way and you know what you're doing with this sucker, I'm going to show you casting. 
so that you can make awesome tools and weapons for your vanilla Minecraft world using the smelter. So, the add-on is simple enough. All you need is to place a coal block on the left side. The left side of the construct's front face. And then you place a lever down right here. To switch the smeltery mode from turn stuff into ingots mode into casting mode, make sure this lever is facing in a downwards direction. Up, off, down, on. Basically, if the lever's touching this, it means it's on. It's on, baby. But you're going to need a few different things before you can get to casting. First of all, you're going to need wooden tools. Yes, wooden tools, because you're going to use all the ores and minerals you're collecting over here to coat the wooden tools into something greater than they are. No, I don't want to put you down. I want to put you in here, man. There we go. So we'll hide all these for the time being. Do something nice and simple. Now, tool casting only works with three different ores. Works with iron ore, works with gold ore, works with diamond ore. Notice these three materials are things you can make normal tools and armor out of. There's no emerald swords, there's no coal chest plates. I'm sorry. What do you want? Now, in order to get your castings going strong, first of all, you're going to need either a sword, a pickaxe, a regular axe, or a shovel. Does not work with other tools, does not work with other armor. I know it's it's vanilla, okay? It's vanilla. It's pretty sweet considering, man. Lay off me, or lay off RSDG, yeah. So let's just make a nice, simple cast. You start with gold. Gold's gonna be, I believe, the weakest? No, gold's actually the strongest in this case. Forgot, because it's technically, it, you can get the most modern, I'm gonna explain that all in just a little bit. Don't you worry a little head about it. Let's make something nice and iron. So, all castings are going to require four ores. Does not matter if it's a sword, a pickaxe, a shovel, or otherwise, it is going to need four. Now, to make sure that you're going to cast it instead of smelt it into ingots, because right now you'll notice, okay, so it's turning into iron, fine and dandy, but check it out. You ready for this? It's going to deposit it up here. Well, I mean, once it's done cooking, you see? It put it in here. You don't want that to happen, so you need to make sure you're in casting mode. Again, touching on. Once you've done that, place in the four ores using the material you want to turn your cast into, one, two, three, four. Just like that, you set, and then choose the object of your choice to turn into a beautiful casted item. We have here an iron pickaxe. We just made an iron pickaxe with our four iron ores. You'll notice, rideable, rideable tool, just like in Construct. You're gonna use the fact that it's rideable to add modifiers to this baby. But before we do that, I'm gonna make some more tools. So let's go ahead and make, let's make a golden sword. So one, two, three, four, five. You'll notice we put in five right there. Reason for that? Not because this takes five, but because we just got a golden longsword, and you'll notice there's still some ore cooking up in there. If you put in extra, you can just turn casting mode back off, and it will in fact collect right into this little beautiful area. So waste not, want not. If you put any amount of ore under four, and then throw your tool on here, for example, you put that in here, we only put in one diamond though, you see, tool, or we didn't put in any diamond. If it picks up a wooden tool while this is down and there's not enough ore, it will just delete it. So keep that in mind or you'll lose all your precious wooden tools that are so hard to come by. <laughs> so let's make some diamond tools. Ooh. One, two, three, four. Give me that diamond goodness, baby. Yes, diamond lumber axe. By the way, they're all slightly iron pick. Diamond Lumber Axe, Golden Long Sword, and let's shoot, let's throw in a nice, let's get a, we gonna get a nice golden shovel, so one, two, three, four, give me that golden shovel, thank you very much, golden spade, sorry, all rideable though, and that is the important thing, my friends, so now that you've got a bunch of rideable tools, I'm gonna show you how to modify. So you got your tools, they're all rideable, ready for you to add magic powers to them, but you're gonna need to do a couple things first. You're gonna need to grab yourself some modifiers. Redstone blocks, quartz blocks, lapis blocks, obsidian blocks, blaze powder, and emeralds are all the different modifiers that you need for the Tinker's Construct Command. You're also gonna need to consult this book. It's gonna make things a lot easier for you, but let's grab, now we're gonna leave them for now. Okay, so. Efficiency, sharpness, luck, reinforced fire, as in fire aspect, and silky, as in silk touch. These are the six different modifiers that come with this command. 
Now these are the max levels you can get for each one, and these are the required blocks for each one. Couple things before we start. First of all, RSDG has made it clear this is in fact a typo. Not sure if he's gonna fix it because he hasn't fixed it, and it's the commands uh, I think like six weeks or two months old now. It's supposed to be 16, not 32 redstone blocks. So it's 16 redstone blocks, 16 quartz blocks, 24 lapis, 32 obsidian, 16 blaze powder, and one emerald for the soak touch. Was a little bit overpowered in my opinion. Second thing you need to know is most of these things are going to raise two levels at a time. We're going to see right now exactly how it all works. But just thought I'd let you know if you jump from level 1 to level 2 or something, that's why. So, let's knock this out. What do we want? We definitely want an efficient pickaxe. I think that's a good idea. So, if we want an efficient pickaxe, what do we need? We need to grab ourselves some redstone blocks. So, let's grab all these. we got a nice big old stack right now. So, we're going to do it just like that. Just like that. In order to combine them, all you gotta do is drop your baby on the ground and drop your blocks of rest on the ground. Just like that, pick it back up. Didn't do anything. Don't worry. Normally this is where I would pause and have a reason as to why that happened. But it's already been made clear to me why that happens. It's, it's a bug with the construct command. Make sure you actually drop down your blocks first and then drop the tool. If you do it in any other order, you're going to have a bad time. So drop it down, then drop that. Just like that, got a nice pickaxe with efficiency 4. Another glitch that RSDG has made clear to me. Sometimes it will just jump from efficiency 4, or from, from 0, to immediately to efficiency 4. So now I have an efficiency 4 pickaxe. The final thing I want to let you know about the different casts is each type of cast comes with a different max modifier level. Iron is tier 1. Diamond is tier 2, gold is tier 3. So, that being said, when you go and look at these different levels you can get, gold can reach the max level of all of these things seen here. Diamond will reach a tier below. For example, you can max out your efficiency using a diamond tool at a level of 6. Iron is at 4, which is what we're currently at right now. So, if I were to try and add further levels to this, Look what would happen. Instead, it will actually not change at all. However, if I go and make a nice diamond one real quick, you'll notice, shabba-doo shabba -de, pick this up, starts with four, drop some more down once again, you go and get yourself a nice efficiency six pickaxe. Try and do it again, you're gonna be out of luck, friend. Efficiency two got to be careful with how these work. If you've hit your max level, there's a chance trying to add additional modifiers will actually drop your efficiency down. If that happens to be the case, it's fixable by just throwing some more ores. See, now we're back at efficiency 4. Drop it one more time. Now we're back at efficiency 6, which is the max level. Again, if this was gold, you could get all the way up to efficiency 8. But I will just show you that with these tools instead. So now what do we want? Let's make a nice, let's make a sharpness sword. Ooh, it's gonna be so strong. So you're gonna need quartz to do that, friends. Works the same way as the redstone, 16 at a time. Drop your quartz down, drop your rideable sword down. Shabba doo, bada bing, sharpness four, I like it. Drop this down one more time. What do we got here, what do we got here? I'll tell you what we got. We got sharpness four once again. So, it's a little glitchy. It's supposed to travel in twos, so don't feel too gypped because we, were, we weren't supposed to start with four to begin with. Now we're at sharpness six. Tell me you wouldn't want to mess with a sharpness six sword. Well, I'll tell you you won't because you're going to want to mess with a sharpness eight sword. Plus 14 attack damage. Are you kidding me? You're going to take out the world with this sword. It's a very strong sword. That's what I'm trying to say. Let's give our golden spade some good old fashioned luck. Luck is used by throwing lapis blocks on your tool. And luck, which you'll see in just a second, is a combination of two different enchants. We have looting two and fortune two, which means this is gonna be good for either a damaging weapon to get looting on there, or for a fortune weapon. Now the way looting actually works is whatever item you're holding when the mob dies, that's when the looting effect takes place. So if you're fast, you could technically put a fortune, you can put a bunch of luck on a single type of your tool here, 
See, we got the, the looting three and the fortune three. Check this. Are you ready for this? Get out of here. Watch this. Ugh. Oh, it didn't. It didn't change. Please, please, please work for me. Hey, looting three and fortune. Wait, wasn't that what it was at before? All right, the ultimate test. Four, four, four. No. <laughs> okay, so don't go past looting three, fortune three. That's the max you can get with the golden tools, which means you're gonna max out at looting one fortune one for the iron. And you're max out at looting two fortune two for diamond. Right, right, right. So that all sounds good, but Tyler, I want a really durable axe. Well, start with a diamond axe because that's going to be the tool that lasts the longest, given that gold breaks extremely easily. Grab yourself some obsidian. Throw your rideable axe into a pile of obsidian and check it out. Starts with an unbreaking six on the diamond lumber. Axe. Now, I believe that may have been a little glitch right there, so we're going to see if it's 6 or not. See? Caps out at 6. Unbreaking 6 Diamond Lumber Axe. Good luck trying to ever get this guy broken anytime soon. It's just not going to happen. So we got two more tools we want to show off. Requires blaze powder. Requires emeralds. We want to get ourselves a nice pickaxe that can silk touch. Well, that's easy enough. Take a rideable pickaxe, drop it onto an emerald. Is that, is that one emerald powder? What the heck is emerald powder? Oh, you know why? Because I'm literally the worst guy. I forgot. I need to, <laughs> you can't use regular tools, friends. I cannot stress that enough. If you want to add any casts, you're going to have to make it over here using the ores of, isn't that, isn't that just, isn't that just grand? That's funny. I totally forgot. It's got to be a right old one. The other really cool thing about this is if you want, you're either gonna use gold and it's gonna break really fast, or you're gonna have to get a silk touch to get diamond ore because you can only use the ore if you wanna use the cast. But now that that's out of the way, we got a single emerald ore, top of an iron pick, get yourself nice silk touch pickaxe. Simple enough, very, in my opinion, overpowered. One emerald equals silk touch, things get a little nasty dirty. But, final enchantment, 16 blaze powder. Throw that on top of an iron sword, which I also forgot to... <laughs> Look, it's been a long day, okay? Just lay off me, man. Golden Long Sword has been rideabullified. Drop your blaze powder on, drop the long sword on. Bada boom. You got Fire Aspect 3 added to your sword. So check out this arsenal of tools we have here. Ugh! Feels just, feels just way too good to be a gangster. Honestly does. So, we have ourselves an Efficiency 6 Pickaxe, a Silk Touch 1 Iron Pickaxe, Unbreaking 6 Diamond Lumber Axe, Looting 1 Fortune 1, which should be, you know, 3, but we messed it up. Golden Spade, Fire Aspect 3 Sword, Sharpness 8 Sword. What? One thing that just came to mind right now that I want to test for myself is do these enchantments combine? We have Efficiency 6. We cloned it, and Unbreaking 3. So apparently you'll get Efficiency 6, Unbreaking 3. So we're going to see if that works right now. We're going to test that out by heading to the Nether. Oh yeah. So we're here in the Nether. We've got Efficiency 6, and we've got our Efficiency 6, Unbreaking 3. First of all, butter. Like butter. Kind of hard to tell, given that Nether Rack is already pretty easy to break, but you'll see this pickaxe is going fairly quickly. Now we're gonna test how fast it goes with the unbreaking one. Let's test. I wanna see if they truly stack. So far, so far it's looking real good. You know what? It looks as though enchantments stack. That is huge, guys. That is major. That is a seriously big deal. You can combine your Tinker's Construct enchantments with regular enchantments as well. That's gonna be so useful. What else can we show off? Oh, so you already know what Silk Touch does. You already know what these do. That's just unbreaking. That's just really efficient. That's just really efficient, it's not gonna break. Fire Aspect 3, Sharpness 8. Let's spawn in some mobs here. We got Difficulty 2. We're gonna let some mobs spawn in. We'll be oh, well, how about that? There's a mob. So. This is a diamond, or this is a gold sword with sharpness 8. 
Check this out. Two hits. Two hits to kill that sucker. You'll notice, though, your sword is not going to last too long. So if you decide to make some gold tools with your construct command, combine it with an unbreaking. Suddenly, you've got a powerhouse weapon that you just get to show off to all your friends. You need you, They need to know that you're superior. You know what I mean? Like You, they have, you have to teach them who's boss you. Right. Here we go. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. So this is with my... Fire Aspect 3. So check out how long this sucker stays on fire for. I believe the way- ouch. Okay. I believe the way Fire Aspect works is whatever Fire Aspect it's at, it adds like one- I think Fire Aspect 1 adds uh, like a heart and a half of damage. Fire Aspect 2 adds, I think, two and a hearts, two and a half hearts of damage. So I'm pretty sure Fire Aspect 3 will do three and a half hearts of fire damage. And all you gotta do is combine this if you're smart. Ouch. Ouch, man. I guess we're gonna see right now. Three. Oh, okay. well, it only hit me. I'm probably different because the fire lasts a lot longer on this guy. And then you just take him out. Look at it. Look at it. Are you ready? Huh? Not a big deal. Just two hit with the golden sword. You are a strong man or woman if you add this to your world. Final thing I want to test out can we combine two constructs? Ah, uh, you see? Check it out. So it gets rid of the fire aspect three on this one, drops it down to two. So, doesn't look like you might be able to for all your enchantments. However, that being said, there is an absurd amount of things you can do with the Tinker's Construct mod, friends, for vanilla Minecraft. Only one command required for this amazing contraption. So once again, a big thank you to the RSDG Productions for making this crazy command block creation. I do hope you add it to your world. It's a lot of fun. Change the Minecraft vanilla feel with if you do or if you enjoy this video and you want to see more only one command on the channel then do make sure you drop a like on the video if we can break 1500 likes for this incredibly complex yet fun command block creation then I'll make sure to bring you some more only one command very soon. Of course, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to my channel for future command block creations and of course we will see you later.